The Republicans respond. Good morning, everyone. I'm Maria Bartiromo. Welcome to Sunday Morning Futures. Speaker John Banner promised, quote, the House will act. Now the Judiciary Committee announcing it will hold hearings following President Obama's unilateral immigration actions. The chairman of that committee joins me moments away. And remember those 30,000 emails that Congress subpoenaed from Lewis Lerner that just kind of got lost? Well, guess what? Looks like some Treasury Department investigators found them after all. We will talk about it. Plus, the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade. This is the 88th year that it kicks off the holiday shopping season. But are consumers in the mood to buy? We will ask the CEO of Macy's himself as we look ahead on Sunday Morning Futures. The House Judiciary Committee planning to hold a hearing on what it says is, quote, President Obama's power grab. This following the president's announcement last week of unilateral executive action on immigration. Congressman Bob Goodlatte is with me. He's the chairman of that committee. Congressman, good to have you on the program. Good to be with you, Maria, and your viewers. So what is the response to the president's action? Well, we have a number of uh, avenues to pursue, and there are lots of consultations going on about that right now, but we can take spending actions, we can take legislative actions, we can take legal action, uh, and there are a lot of different ways to do each one. Uh, we've now seen the president's specific proposal for a couple days now, and uh, my staff and many other members of Congress and others are hard at work examining the correct approach but uh, I can assure you one thing, and that is that this is a major assault on the constitutional authority of the Congress, and the Congress, uh, particularly on the Republican side, and both the House and the Senate, is very unified in our determination to stop this action. All right, I, Congressman, I know that the House Republicans are planning a hearing on December 2nd. I want to ask you about that hearing in a moment, but first, let's talk uh, about sort of the backdrop here. More with Congressman Goodlatte coming up. First, the lawmakers overhauling uh, our immigration immigration system. Uh, that's nothing new. Let's take a look at some past actions to better understand where we are today and where we could be tomorrow. Fox News senior correspondent Eric Sean joins us with that angle. Good morning to you, Eric. Good morning, Maria, and good morning, everyone. It is a showdown in Washington, a defiant president accused of violating the Constitution versus a newly empowered Republican Congress intent on not rewarding lawbreakers. As you might have heard, there are members of Congress who question my authority to make our immigration system work better. Well, I have one answer for that. Pass a bill. It was a sweeping order. The president instantly granting five million illegals illegal status and preventing deportation. Our supporters say it is a humane step to protect hardworking immigrants and reform a broken system. Critics bitterly blast the president and his party. Last year, Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, the son of Cuban immigrants whose own grandfather was reportedly briefly undocumented, well, he along with others crafted a Senate bill that eventually died in the Republican House. We're dealing with this, not because we legally have to, but because, number one, it is in our national interest as a nation. It is not good for this country to have millions of people living in shadows. And number two, we're dealing with this issue because this is who we are. And now in reaction to the president's move, Rubio said this, quote, we need immigration reform, but the right way to do it is to first bring illegal immigration under control by securing the borders and enforcing the laws. Then modernizing our legal immigration system, the president's actions now make all of this harder and are unfair to people in our immigration system who are doing things the right way. Well, back in 1986, President Ronald Reagan gave so-called amnesty to three million illegal immigrants, but that was a bill passed by Congress, not like President Obama bypassed by the president. And there are still about 11 million illegal immigrants here in our country, and they are not going anywhere. So the challenge is to find a solution that is acceptable to both sides, if that is even possible, considering the current contentious political climate. Maria? It sure is contentious. Eric, thank you. Eric Sean with the latest there. Now more with House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte. And Congressman, let me ask you about those hearings on uh, December 2nd. Will you look to have the president testify? Well, so far that has not been a consideration. I have never seen a President of the United States come to the Congress to testify, but what we are going to do is to have constitutional scholars uh, and uh, legal 
uh, professors, uh, law professors, who uh, can speak to this issue of what the powers are of the Congress and what the powers are of the President. And to the President's challenge, Article 1, Section 1, the first sentence of, the, of Section 1 of the Constitution says, all legislative authority herein granted shall rest in a Congress of the United States. Article 2 says that the President shall take care to faithfully execute the laws. It doesn't say the Congress can act, and if the Congress fails to act, then the President can act. The president either has the authority he has under the law or he does not. And I and a great many other people say he does not, and that will be the subject of the hearing. Look, what about the economic fallout of, of the president's action? You know, much of the economic fallout or, I guess, executing this executive order falls to the states, whether it be issuing driver's license or, you know, paying for health insurance or uh, in-state funding for, for college. What kind of economic fallout are you expecting? Well, I think there's going to be significant burdens on the states and on the federal government and, Maria, as was noted uh, by Marco Rubio, on those people who for years have worked through the legal immigration system to immigrate to the United States. We have the most generous legal immigration program in the world and those people will be hurt because when you try to process up to five million people uh, for uh, new benefits, you're going to be delaying and deferring and in some instances even uh, never getting around to handling the applicants who are in this system right now following the rules abiding by the law. Let, let me switch gears, Congressman, ask you about Lois Lerner's emails. 30,000 emails apparently were found. Do we know what the contents of those emails are? We don't know yet. I want to uh, commend the Inspector General uh, at the uh, Department of the Treasury for finding these emails. Obviously, it raises a lot of questions about uh, what has been done by those who have promised to investigate this matter. But it's also, I think, uh, important for the public to understand that we just know of their existence. They have been found uh, on these emergency backup tapes. They have not yet been decrypted, so we don't know the content yet, and it will be some period of time. We don't know exactly how long before we get them, but we should be uh, continuing this investigation. The Judiciary Committee and the entire House of Representatives voted last year uh, to call upon the Attorney General to appoint an uh, independent counsel, a special prosecutor, to look into this matter. Uh, they have chosen not to do that. I think this is going to be more evidence to support the need to get outside from under the people who claim to be investigating this and are not doing it and to have a real uh, independent special prosecutor handle this matter. Uh, of course, throughout this whole time, as so many people were speculating that uh, they're hiding something uh, by the continual, uh, you know, s uh, saying that the emails were lost and the servers were destroyed, uh, what would you hope to seek if, in fact, you were to read in those emails that there was a direct conversation with the White House to target conservative groups? Well, I don't want to speculate on uh, who may have been involved, what those e emails say, but we will follow the evidence wherever it leads, and we will act upon it accordingly, and we will insist upon those people being, uh, who are involved in infringing upon the free speech rights uh, of American citizens to be held accountable and uh, to make sure that Americans can regain some trust in their tax collection system, which is vitally important and which has been badly damaged by this whole episode where we see uh, employees of the IRS, including Lois Lerner, uh, leading an effort to penalize people based upon their political views. That's wrong, and it's got to stop. Congressman, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Thank you, Maria. We'll see you soon. We appreciate your time today. President Obama using his executive authority yet again, this time broadening the scope of the military mission in Afghanistan. What the new plan means for our brave men and women serving in harm's way. You can follow me on Twitter at Maria Bartiromo at Sunday Futures. Let's continue the conversation. Let us know what you'd like to hear about that executive action as we discuss it next on Sunday Morning Futures. Back in a moment.